The U.S. and its allies would take new economic action against Russia in response to its continued aggression in Ukraine. One of those allies, French President Emmanuel Macron, who says all options are on the table for new Russian sanctions now. For more, French Ambassador to the U.S., Philippe Etienne, joining us live. Ambassador, let's talk about Macron here. He has been the leader who has taken a very prominent role in negotiating with Putin. So are you concerned that this announcement could hurt the those conversations. Thank you for having me in this very, very serious moments. Uh, our president, uh, by the way, together with the German chancellor, uh, decided to, to, to keep the contact with the Russian president in close coordination with President Zelensky of Ukraine uh, to insist on uh, the ceasefire, of course, but also to insist on the humanitarian access and uh, to the protection of the nuclear s plants in Ukraine. Those are the, the most pressing uh, demands. Of course, we are also uh, willing to, to stand with Ukraine in stepping up the pressure and in taking new sanctions. The European leaders have just met near Paris in Versailles and the message was very clear. The message was clear uh, from behalf of, of Macron that uh, he will support uh, other G seven nations and the president with toughening sanctions here. But at the same time, he is involved with these negotiations with Putin. He has Putin's ear. Do you think that Putin is showing any sign of softening his position within these talks with Macron? And how do you think this announcement today will impact those talks they've been having? I, I cannot say that um, uh, we see uh, re a real positive evolution. Uh, on the contrary, the, what we hear is, remains very, very worrying. Uh, and uh, we will uh, um, continue on our side, together with our allies, to uh, increase the price of uh, the invasion and the aggression by Russia against Ukraine to stand uh, to extend our support uh, to the Ukrainian people in their brave defense. But at the same time, we keep, we keep the contact because we need it. And it is also welcomed by the Ukrainian leadership, the Ukrainian president. So will President Macron meet with Putin again anytime soon, Ambassador? For the time being, uh, they have, um, when it feels when it is felt it is necessary, they have calls. Uh, it's not for the time being about meetings, but about phone calls. And the last ones were phone calls uh, between the president of France and the president of Russia, but also with the chancellor of Germany. So EU leaders uh, now, Ambassador, have ruled out granting Ukraine's fast-tracked application to join the Union. Do you think that that could change? And what would admitting Ukraine into the EU actually mean for this conflict? Could it have an impact? The European leaders have just met, as I said, near Paris, and they have very clearly said that Ukraine belongs to the European family. They have given a signal, a uh, political signal to the Ukrainian president and the Ukrainian people. And at the same time, they have launched the process. Ukraine has officially presented its request for becoming a member of the European Union. In our treaties, we have no special or fast track process, but we have a procedure and this procedure has been now initiated. Finally, I have to ask you about the refugees. We're talking about more than two and a half million refugees that have fled Ukraine now. You're well aware of that, Ambassador. How will France and other European nations work to accommodate them? Can you give me any specifics on how you plan to help with these kids and these families? Absolutely. It's one of our priorities. By the way, more than two million refugees from Ukraine, outside Ukraine, but also I think not far from 2 million other Ukrainians displaced inside Ukraine. So the priority, we have two priorities. First, to send humanitarian relief to Ukraine. We are airlifting as much as we can, uh, of course, uh, to help the populations, but also 
as you said, to welcome the refugees. And every country, for the time being, in particular Poland, but also Romania, Slovakia, uh, Hungary, and outside the EU, Moldova, are the frontline countries. And we, c we really commend the, the, those, the attitude of those countries and their populations who are welcoming the refugees from Ukraine. But all of us, all 27 member states, we are welcoming these refugees, including the ones like France, which are more to the west, we have already thousands of Ukrainian refugees in France, and everybody in France is willing to, t like in, in, in all countries in the European Union, is, uh, is ready to, to, to welcome them and to, uh, to have them. We have already in the EU decided to give them a special regime of protection, what we call temporary protection, so that they can not only have a legal uh, statute in our countries, but also they can receive help and they can uh, work. And so we have given this statute immediately to all refugees coming from Ukraine, whatever their nationality is. Most of them are Ukrainians, but all, also from other other countries coming fleeing from Ukraine. So the Ukrainian families are welcome in our countries. Well, they definitely need that welcome. Ambassador Philippe Etienne, okay. we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.